beautiful sunny January day. So brought the puppies out to get them some sunshine. And I wanted to do a video on how to choose a breeder. All of these puppies are spoken for if I get my deposit on John. Everyone's spoken for. So I don't have any puppies available right now, but you can keep checking in case anybody drops out. But I thought it would be good to do a video on how to shop for a puppy so that as you're looking around, you kind of know what to ask. And, you know, I could do four hours on this, but I'm just going to hit probably the, the most important points, in my opinion. Uh, there are a lot of scammers out there. There are a lot of people who are brokers and won't tell you that. They're buying puppies or they're brokering puppies and selling puppies and they're getting them from puppy mills. And the first thing I want to talk about real quickly is the difference between a backyard breeder, a hobby breeder, and a puppy mill. A backyard breeder is someone who they have a dog and they like their dog and so they breed it to the dog down the street and they have puppies and they don't do any health testing. They have really don't know much about their breed or the health problems that might be in their breed. They just thought it would be fun to have a litter of puppies. That's backyard breeder. A hobby breeder is someone who does not do it for a living, who does it for a hobby, who raises quality animals, who does health testing, who adheres to the breed standard and gives the puppies and the parents every single thing that they could ever want or need because making money is not the objective, it's not the bottom line. They have another source of income that's their main source of income, so they provide their puppies with an enriched environment. And a puppy mill is a place that breeds puppies by the hundreds, they might have multiple breeds, they do not care anything about their dogs. They do not give their dogs any kind of veterinary care. They don't care what quality their puppies are. They're just breeding dogs for pet stores or just to sell. They're just breeding them to sell like any other kind of livestock. In fact, most people that raise livestock um, do better than puppy mill people with their puppies. So if you buy a puppy from a pet store or you buy a puppy from a broker or you buy a puppy off of a website where they always have puppies available, you're buying from a puppy mill. And please don't say if you bought a puppy from a pet store that you rescued it from a pet store. You did not rescue that puppy from a pet store. You bought the puppy that came from a puppy mill and you supported a puppy mill. So. I think next time I hear somebody say I rescued my dog from a pet store, I'm going to fall over. But I, I get it. You go to a pet store, you see this little puppy, you feel so sorry for it because it's in a cage. And, that, and that's what they're pandering to. They want you they want you to make an emotional decision on a low-quality animal that's way overpriced. So getting that out of the way, how do you tell the difference when you go to a website? When you go to a website, I would say the very first thing to do is to send in an inquiry and say that you want to talk to the person on the phone. Talk to the person on the phone and here's the very first question to ask. Can, well first of all, do you own the mother and the father? Now sometimes they'll own the mother but they won't own the father because they went outside their kennel to breed to somebody else's dog. And then if the answer to that is yes, then you say, okay, can I come and meet the parents of my puppy? Now it's a little bit tricky with COVID right now, but you know, I welcome visitors as long as we can be outside. And I think that any reputable hobby breeder will say the same thing. They'll say, okay, if it's a pretty day, you can come for 20 minutes, you can meet the parents and then you gotta go, you gotta scat. But if they make up some sort of an excuse why you cannot come and visit, walk away because that's the first indication that either they don't have the parents or the parents are in terrible condition and they don't want you to see the parents or they're living in horrible conditions and they don't want you to see how the dogs are living. So number one, even if you have no intention of going to visit, ask them, can I come and visit the parents? And if the answer to that is no, you're done. Okay, so your next question is going to be, what kind of health testing do you do on the parents? And if they can't provide you with health testing information, like if you look on our website, you'll see all of the DNA testing that we do. 
Uh, if they don't do any health testing, walk away, period. So those are the first two most important things. When you adopt your puppy, you want to make sure that you're going to have breeder support. And if you're not going to have breeder support, then you don't really want to adopt your puppy from that person. So that's one reason why I say call them on the phone, talk to them on the phone, because if they don't, now look at, they don't want to talk to you for half an hour, they're busy, they don't want to hear all about your last dog and the dog before that. But the breeder should answer your questions about the breed, and you should answer the breeder's questions about your living situation. If the breeder doesn't ask you any questions, if they just answer your questions and don't have any questions for you, then that's a breeder who really doesn't care where their puppies go. And if they're not going to help you determine if this is the right breed for you, and of course, you know, if they don't know you personally, it's hard, but there's a few clues. You know, if you're gone all the time and your idea of being active is you go play tennis and you go, you know, do things that would not include your dog, that's not the home for one of these dogs. These dogs need to be included in what you're doing. But anyway, make sure that the breeder has time to answer your questions patiently and also asks you some questions before they take a deposit on the puppy. If they don't ask you any questions, it's somebody who doesn't care about where their puppies go. They just want to sell puppies, and that's it. So another thing to ask is what kind of health guarantee do they provide, and do they provide that guarantee in writing? And most hobby breeders will have a what's called a spay-neuter contract guarantee rolled into one, meaning you're adopting the puppy as a pet, and you're going to neuter or spay your dog so that there aren't a bunch of unwanted mutt dogs being born and going into the dog pound. So you will get a guarantee that combines with a spay-neuter contract. If you look on my website at kaleidoscopetoyossies.weebly.com, uh, you will see my guarantee on my puppy page. So they should offer you a genetic health guarantee, a lifetime genetic health guarantee, and they should also offer you a uh, structural guarantee. So if there's no written guarantee, walk away. So once you are, you know, starting to narrow down your search, then you also need to ask at what age do they let the puppies go? Because you don't want somebody who lets them go too young and you don't want somebody who keeps them too long. I mean, there are people that Oh, we're keeping this dog till it has all of its shots and you can have it at 16 weeks. And no. And there are people that'll say, oh yeah, you can have it at five or six weeks. No. And the best time to get your puppy is right around eight weeks of age, maybe up to 10 weeks of age. Um, but that's really the best, the best window. That puppy needs to be home with you so it can get to know your situation and your lifestyle. So once you find someone like that, then... Find out if they will allow you, and again, you know, to come and visit the puppies after the puppies are born, um, if you're putting a deposit on, on puppies that are unborn. And I, I generally let people come at about six weeks and see the puppies, so just make sure you're able to do that. And once you've determined that, then you've got to decide, now I do not ship puppies, you have to come and get my puppies but some breeders will put a puppy on an airplane by itself and send it to you and if you're in a situation where you absolutely cannot go to visit the puppies don't tell them that tell them that you're coming to see the puppies and make sure that they're okay with that and then you can later tell them well you know um i can't but you know you have to find out first of all if they ship and i i just don't agree with shipping but some people do it and i guess they don't have a problem so um, but even if you can't come and visit, you want them to think that you are going to come and visit to make sure that they are not some sort of a scam. Next comes registration. You want to be sure you ask them what kind of registration the puppies come with and will the puppies come with registration papers at the time of pickup. And some people will say, oh, papers don't mean anything to me, but please get your puppy's registration papers whether they mean anything to you or not that way you know that you're dealing with somebody who bothers to register their dogs and also who didn't steal 
dogs or take dogs out of the animal shelter and then use them for breeding dogs. This happens. They'll go to the pound and get some sort of a dog that's a purebred and then they get another purebred dog or they steal it out of somebody's yard and they're breeding them together. So for the, the breeder with integrity will provide you with what's called limited registration papers if you're getting a pet, which means that you can't breed the dog, but the dog is a registered dog. So find out if the puppies are registered and if they guarantee registration papers. Also, you need to find out what kind of vaccinations that they've been given and make sure they're going to give you a vaccination history and a deworming history so that when you take your puppy to the vet for the first time, the vet knows what kinds of uh, worming treatments and vaccinations that your puppy was given. Then also find out what your puppy comes with. I mean, we send quite a little kit home with our puppies. Uh, we send home a crate of some kind. We send home some PP pads. We send home some toys. We send home collar and leash. We send home some of the food the puppies have been eating. And so pretty much you have everything you need to get started other than, you know, uh, this is a, they come with a travel crate. You can see there's a puppy in there right now. Um, but you're going to need either a much larger crate than that, or you're going to need an exercise pin like what they're in right now. You'll need a bowl for food and water, and they also come with a bed. My puppies come with one of these beds. So we try to send home things that they're used to playing with and beds that are, they've been sleeping in so that they're more comfortable when they get to their new home. So find out what your puppy comes with. So the price of the puppy isn't just the puppy. The price of the puppy is the puppy, it's the guarantee, it's the breeder's knowledge, it's the time <laughs> that the breeder has spent with these dogs, it's the guarantee, it's the supplies, it's the vaccinations and the dewormings, it's all of the breed research that the breeder has gone through, all the physical, all the um, health research the breeder has done. It's the money that the breeder has spent on, on acquiring quality breeding animals. It's the money the breeder spends on taking care of those animals. I mean, my girls only have one litter a year. And once the puppies are gone, I still have that mama and I still have that daddy. And they have to go to the vet and they have to go do this and they have to go do that. And I spend money on them like crazy. So you're not. it's not just the price of a puppy. It's the price of the care of the parents and on and on. So so when you're looking at prices, because I'll tell you what, there are people that will just breed a backyard litter and they'll go online and they'll go, okay, well this breed, whatever it is, they're, they're going for 2,500 bucks. So I'm gonna ask 2,500 bucks for my puppies. Or maybe I'll ask. When you are talking to a breeder, be honest with them about your situation, how much time you're going to have for raising a puppy, how much time you're going to have for a dog. If you see yourself having that dog for the next 15 years, puppies are cute, but they grow up into dogs. And then you have a dog and then you have an old dog, you have a geriatric dog, and you have to go through all of that right up to the end. And you need to be honest with yourself and honest with your breeder. The breeder can only ask you questions and it's up to you to answer them honestly. And, and sometimes a breeder will be able to get a feeling, like I've, I've had people that I just had a feeling about them and I, I said, you know, why don't you wait, learn a little bit more about the breed. Um, you know, we'll have another litter later. You don't have to commit to a puppy this time around and people appreciate that I and mean, if you have a breeder who's pressuring you and just trying to get you to make that deposit and trying to get you to commit to the puppy you know unless you keep you know now here's the the flip side to that is when you get someone who keeps saying oh yeah I'm gonna send you a deposit oh yeah yeah I'm gonna send you a deposit oh yeah I'm getting ready to send you a deposit well they're gonna come to a point where they say look you need to, I need to have that deposit in the next 24 hours because I keep telling people no. But, you know, if this is your first inquiry and, and you're talking with them and you're trying to make up your mind, and if, just don't, don't say, well, you know, this puppy is going to go really fast and 
boy, you better make up your mind because there's never going to be another puppy ever in the world like this one. And, you know, you need to walk away from that because this is a, a 12 to 17 year commitment, seriously. And it's just, uh, it's, a it's an adoption of a baby and bringing it into your home. And the dog is going to change your life. It's going to change your routine. It's going to try your patience. It's going to require a lot of training. It's going to be very expensive over the next 15 years in supplies and veterinary and training and, and your time, the sacrifices that you're going to make because you have a dog. So it's a huge decision and you certainly shouldn't have some breeder trying to pressure you into buying a puppy on the spot. If you get that kind of a vibe, then you know that you're dealing with the wrong person. But anyway, I'm going to stop right here before it gets too long. <laughs> Puppies are starting to crash out. I brought them up onto the deck and I just want to say, if you're living in a homeowners association or you don't have a fenced in yard, this is two exercise pins clipped together. And this is a great way. I'm sitting on the outside right now because I was going to be talking to you and I didn't want to be you know, dealing with the puppies, but it's a great way. You can just set this up in your yard and you can go sit out in the sun with your puppy and it can run around and it doesn't have to be on a leash. You can do a lot of training in here. You can put two or three or four or five of these things together and make a pretty good sized yard. And then when you're done with your puppy that day, you just fold it up and nobody can say anything about it. So anyway, I'm going to stop here and I'll check the comments to see if anyone has any questions and we may do another another video on on shopping for your new family member and thanks again for watching and please consider liking subscribing sharing and commenting